On sailing Catalpa. We meet some beautiful big giants under the ocean when we have two really cool dives at the Cod Hole in Queensland, Australia. So, um, tell us what happened after you came up from a dive at the Cod Hole, not yesterday, the day before. My hands were tingly, and the day after that, I've got this on my hands. So, Taj has got a bit of a rash going on. We don't know what he's touched, he, he could have touched some of the coral. Um, or the line going down off the mooring buoy, but we all, I think we all grabbed onto that. We're not sure, but he has a rash. Um, <laughs> we put aloe vera on it. We don't have internet, so we can't Google what's going on, but uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, he's okay in a couple of days. Yeah. Is it painful? Not really. It's just a bit sensitive. Yeah. yeah. I just can't close containers and stuff. Yeah. Oh. We'll keep an eye on you and uh, hope it all gets better, hey? The wind's just dropped out. We had <laughs> got the weather this morning and it said 15 and 20 knots of wind and um, it's just dropped right out. We're going a knot, are we? A knot. Oh, Two knots. Could be a knot backwards, forwards, I don't know. <laughs> But our destination's just over here. <laughs> it's literally, we could swim there. But we aren't moving. So, uh, wherever it's feeling, because we could be out of the reef. If we knew this, we would have headed out. So we've just arrived at the Flinders group of islands. This is Stanley Island over here. Stuff of that. Oh, okay. This is Flinders Island. It's a lovely day. We've arrived at the Flinders Group. So we're anchored between Flinders Island and Stanley Island, and we're about to go ashore to find some Aboriginal caves with Aboriginal artwork in them. So we will. Go ashore, hopefully we don't get eaten by a crocodile. a shelter with water. There we met a man. He was doing his washing. We talked for a while. He said that he was going to the top of the Cape and directed us to the Aboriginal caves. Vertebrae, that's like a spine. It's like a whale. Or a croc. It's big. Yeah. Yeah, those are the crocodiles. Why did they say no guns? They're shooting guns. There should be a track that's around the corner here. Come up and around, and there it'll be up here. Beautiful. Let's go.
this a bella gum tree. The indigenous used to use the sap on that, the resin, to bind their spear tips to their spear shafts. The fruit is also eaten from this, eaten raw. So if we can find some, we can have a go. No. Yum. How'd you know that? I just know these things. You do, don't you? Full of knowledge, this man. That's a kangaroo up there, fighting with the other kangaroos, see it? And that thing means magic. What's that thing? And Crocodile. No, that's the elephant. Where are the boats? That's unreal. Is someone getting eaten by the crocodile? No. Was that a roo get taken? It's a stingray. Oh, really? yeah. I don't know. Looks a bit like a. Oh, Lajoa! <laughs> Take a photo of that. Did they write anything? Oh, Lajoa. Hello, Jaha. Hello, Jaha. We've ah. seen you. You have come before us. You did. You were the last people before us to come here. What's the date, Taj? Thursday. Oh, so, this is a visitor's book here on Stanley Island. We just found our friends in the book. So what do you reckon of their artwork, Tosh? It's cool. It's hot. See, I told you that was a stingray. Oh no, yeah, a stingray. Good tucker. Look, here's the picture. Yeah. Yithawara did not paint these images as artworks. Rather, they painted images to help communicate ideas in place of writing. Often they painted over old images which, obscured by dust, can be seen under brighter, newer images such as this wading bird. here the kids just said it looks really new and uh, it looked like it's done recently but I just read on the sign uh, it says these images have not been restored or touched up in any way this bright red ochre and white clay dugong image may be one of the last images painted here the most recent additions were made around 1940 during the war by Johnny Flinders so that's unreal so this is a really cool spot guys, if you get a chance to check this out on the Flinders Group. Um, it's probably one of the stops um, worth the effort on the way to the tip of Cape York. Yeah, it's very cool. Seeing all the um, Aboriginal artwork in here, it's uh, pretty awesome. Uh, a little bit higher when we came in, dropped out, thought we might be a bit longer but we're going to have to wait till the tide comes in. Did you bring food? We have no food. Bella, go drink from the puddle. It is golden orange. So we'll wait it out.
in the caves. I'm gonna sit in here in the shade. So we're just waiting for the tide to come in, sitting in a cave. So we've got fish spring rolls tonight. We just minced up the fish with some garlic and spring onions and soy sauce. Put some noodles and cabbage in there. Voila. We don't know what if it's from the coral or from a fish, but he's got it on his hands. It's day two. My face. And on his face. I'm not allowed to film that. But, um, so, what's the verdict? Well, I put aloe vera on his hands and it soothed it. Um, and then I put it on again. It seems to soothe it. Um, but then, yeah, today I noticed he had a bit around his nose and it's kind of spreading up here and it's a bit red and puffy and he's got it on his foot too so I don't like giving like they don't ever get drugs ever um, I put coconut oil on it I've tried everything to kind of subside it but he's sneezing and carrying on and the doctor when I went to the travel doctor he did say um, if anyone gets any allergies because I was asking about an EpiPen because when I eat seafood sometimes I get or prawns in particular I get an itchy throat so I'm allergic to whatever they put on the prawns um, but he said if that happens just have some of this so it's for swelling related to allergies swelling related to hives itchy skin rash itch caused by hives, itchy and watery eyes, itchy throat, itchy runny and nose. So he's got a runny nose, he's sneezing. We'll see what happens. Well, uh, our next stop is the town, so we can should have internet, we can Google, and we could also hopefully make a phone call um, just to check that everything is okay. But it's always one of those kids in a family, you know, that causes trouble. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, we're pretty lucky, I mean, yeah, we never really have anything happen, so it's a bit odd. We kind of don't know what to do when stuff like this happens. <laughs> it's Friday morning and we just left Flinders Group and we're heading to Morris Island. So the end of running. We have a reef in. It's meant to be 30 knots, but it's 10 and we're doing about 3 knots. And Yeah, we've got the engine running because we've got to get to Morris Island today because it's the only good anchorage from here until there. So we kind of have to keep up an average of five knots so until the wind picks up because it was predicted to be 30 knots today or 30 knots plus. So scared to put any more main up. Yeah, so we reefed the main in because we were scared and uh, now it's, what is the wind? 10 knots. Seven knots. So Taj's rash has actually gone down a bit, thank goodness. <laughs> I did give him an, a, a um, I don't know even know what that is, what we gave you, like an allergy pill. But uh, I don't know if it, it's just going to go down in time. We won't be giving in anymore. We'll put some coconut oil on there and aloe vera. And uh, he's still got his hands this morning. That's good. We thought we're a little bit worried it was going to spread all over his body. <laughs> but it hasn't. It seemed to go down and it's not itchy today, hey? No. No. So, good news. So the wind's finally picked up to what? 20 knots? We got about 20 knots on the beam. Broad reach. A broad reach. We have 20 knots of broad reach. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> so we're going along quite nicely at about seven. seven knots. So that's good. It looks like we should get to our destination today in reasonable time to Morris Island, which is supposed to be a pretty good anchorage. So that's good. This is how to tie a bowline. First, you point, do a loop, that's the hole. Then the bunny comes out the hole 
around the tree and back into the hole. Then you pull and that's how you do a bowline. So we've got 20 knots, 21 on the beam. And we're just sitting at around oh, eight knots, going up, sit, or sitting on eight, six a little bit. Uh, somewhere between eight and eight, six. Cruising. Got number two reef in the mainsail. Genoa's fell right in, 20 knots on the beam and uh, it's good sailing. Our lunch today was Spanish mackerel laxa. Another easy treat is putting some of these into one of these. This goes straight out of the oven. It's a bit hot. a crocodile track but not sure. nautical miles. Uh, we've got 20 to 25 knots of wind on our beam, our aft, aft beam, broad, broad on our broad reach. <laughs> so, aft quarter. Aft quarter. I'll get it right one day. Um, anyway, we're going about seven and seven and a half knots. Our ETA is about 4 p.m. this afternoon, so we've got a straight line to Portland Road, and um, hopefully the, we'll have a fun day of sailing. Stop. 
big fish by the look of it, man. Oh, that's a big fish. Mind you, go on a date, not. So join us next time as we make it to the tip of Australia and arrive at the beautiful Thursday Island in the Torres Straits. Hi, so that was episode 51. Hey. <laughs> okay, look. hey guys, so that was episode 51. If you like this video, give us a like, subscribe, click on our logo on the right side of the screen, click on it and press subscribe. Big thank you to all our patrons of you able to continue our videos and our journey. So thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks for watching. For See you yeah. next time. Hi, Hi Chloe. Chloe.